What's up, everybody? I'm David Hain. Welcome to episode 186 of the A to D from Addict to Disciple podcast. If you enjoy this podcast, please like, subscribe, follow, and share the link with your friends. And if you can go one more step, I'd ask you to do me a favor and get two friends to listen to the podcast and then chat with them about it. If you'd like to get our curriculum, you can get the paperback or ebook of From Ashes to Destiny on Amazon. When we come back, we'll get into this episode entitled When Opportunity Knocks, Be Home. Welcome back to episode 186 of the A to D from Attic to Disciple podcast entitled When Opportunity Knocks, Be Home. In today's episode, we'll look at what we do when opportunity knocks. And I want to start from the premise that what we do at that time is really based on what we've been doing to prepare for the knock to actually happen. An old proverb says, Opportunity knocks but once. This is implying that great opportunities only come once and you risk losing them forever if you do not act quickly and seize them right away. But I believe if we miss the one we have been expecting, that one opportunity that we may have been praying for, hoping for, wishing would come sometime, I believe that if we miss it when it comes, we do have the opportunity for more to come. We can begin to hope that a different opportunity will come knocking that may surprise us. And Lebanese Canadian activist and writer Nawa Zebian wrote, and I quote, whatever you do, do it with purpose. Being focused is not something to be ashamed of. It is something to be proud of. When you know what you're doing and have a clear vision of where you are going, you will not need to chase opportunities. Opportunities will seek you. Happiness will chase you. And instead of being a choice, you will be the one choosing. Can you hear the wisdom in that? When we have a clear vision and know where we are going, Opportunities will come knocking on our door. Are you ready for opportunities to seek you? What are you doing to get in a position where you know where you're going? Where you know you have a clear and focused vision? Would you even trust yourself if opportunities started chasing you around rather than you chasing them? Words of wisdom say opportunity only knocks once, and then it becomes your choice to open the door or ignore it. But this quote from the Canadian activist says, opportunities can start chasing us and choosing us and seeking us if we're ready for them. Author Itawu Koyanikin who wrote, Wealth for All, Living a Life of Success at the Edge of Your Ability, said, and I quote, Opportunity does not waste time with those who are unprepared. So that's what I was talking about in the beginning. What are you doing to prepare yourself to get ready for opportunity to knock? Sometimes we hear it loud and clear, but we're still in fear and We know we're unprepared, so we just ignore the knock. So this is a time for wisdom to accept that this opportunity may look perfect, may look like an answer to prayer, or just what you're hoping for, and to have the discernment to know, is it the right time? Is this the one for me? Do I answer this door? Or is this one that's just going to set me up for a huge disappointment? in a few days, weeks, or months. So, what's the best way to prepare for opportunity? I think the best way to prepare is to grow in understanding of discernment. Author Otessa Moshfe said in the book, Death in Her Hands, and I quote, 
There is nothing more heartbreaking than a squandered opportunity, a missed chance. I knew about stuff like that. I'd been young once. So many dreams had been dashed, but I dashed them myself. I wanted to be safe, whole, have a future of certainty. One makes mistakes when there is confusion about having a future at all and having the future one wants. Shaw, that's deep. Can you hear that? One makes mistakes when there's confusion between having a future at all or having the future we want. And also that we can miss opportunities because we just want to be safe, whole, and have a future of certainty. Just those thoughts can dash our dreams, can kill our dreams. So we can all feel like we've missed opportunities in our youth either because we've been too conservative and wanted to stay safe or because we've been too daring and took too many risks. I think the key is to say of these, these two things or hundreds of other reasons, what are we really looking for at this time? So what I'm saying in this episode is to stay in the present. Because new opportunities arise every week, every day, every hour, if we're ready for them. And Spanish writer Miguel Cervantes wrote, and I quote, Never look for this year's birds in last year's nests. Sometimes you wonder if you heard wrong because the opportunity doesn't show up in the way you expected. These often appear as an interesting chance, but something about it doesn't feel right. So for me, I want to challenge you. If you're wondering if you heard wrong, is it discernment and that you're actually getting a good check in your spirit, so to speak? Or could it be that it doesn't seem right to you because you're still looking for opportunities in last year's nets? You're looking at opportunities in those things that have passed you by rather than looking forward to the new year and the new nest. For me, the key is, are you hearing or seeing the opportunity as a place of healing from old wounds or as a part of your new life? And I think that's very, very important to know the difference. Sometimes you don't even realize there was an opportunity until it has passed you by. Helen Keller once wrote, and I quote, When one door of happiness closes, another opens. But often we look so long at the closed door that we do not see the one that has been opened for us. So this continues that thought of get out of last year's nest. What is it that you're looking back on? and staying in remorse and sorrow and regret for the door that is closed that's keeping you from seeing the doors opening right in front of you and you just are happy sitting there and let someone else seize the chance, seize the opportunity. It could be a job, an apartment, a relationship, whatever. I think it's important to be able to process what happened in the past to determine that they're not going to distract you anymore. They're not going to keep you from seeing clearly when opportunities show up in the future. And I think you need to use those earlier quotes to say, is this opportunity the one that fits for me? Or are these new distractions that I need to be able to let go of? Or perhaps sometimes we don't see the opportunity just because of low self-esteem or no self-confidence? Are you stuck in negative self-talk like the other guy is much better than me anyway, so let him get the opportunity? I want to challenge you as you focus on your next opportunity. Do you really believe you're worthy of happiness? Paul Coelho wrote in Like the Flowing River, and I quote, Sometimes we're so attached to our way of life that we turn down wonderful opportunities simply because we don't know what to do with it. 
So the reality behind that is sometimes opportunities show up as the exact situation we need or we're ready for because of the growth curve we're on. The problem is we see it as a change so great we're not ready for it. So part of your preparation for opportunity is to stay in the present but not be attached to it. The present, no matter how great it is, does not mean it's your forever future. Find the courage to take risks. You will find more opportunities if you jump in the river and go with the flow versus standing on the bank and waiting for an opportunity to get itself out of the river and meet you where you're standing still. Thanks for listening to this episode of the A to D from Addict to Disciple podcast. If you're ready to talk to someone about the opportunities that keep presenting themselves to you or maybe some that you missed or some you're looking for, then now's the time to reach out and join a group. Message me on the link in this podcast or by email at david from a to d at gmail.com. Or go to my website, www.fromatod.org, and click on the contact page. If you're listening on Spotify, you can leave your comments by clicking on the link they provide on that platform. Tune in Monday for our next episode, and as always, stay safe and stay resilient.